Thanks for staying with us on News Hub. We did promise you a bumper package today, and we're keeping that promise. So taking a look at the state of the nation, we're going to be talking to someone who's been in the news <laughs> year in, year out, and whose perspective we seek this morning as to how, what is happening in the nation and how those in the position of authority are handling issues, as well as you, uh, Nigerian, watching us at this point in time. He's a human rights activist, a pro-democracy campaigner, blogger, writer, lecturer, and a publisher. Your guess is as good as mine. We present to you Omo Yele Shoure. Omo Yele Shoure, thank you so much for being part of News Hub this morning. How are you doing? All right. Can you please just unmute? Okay. All right. Can you unmute your device? I have a, okay. My, my, my device is unmuted. I don't know what's wrong on your Okay, we can hear can you, you hear clearly me? now, Omo Yele. Thank you very much for being very part of the program. All right. If you can hear me right now, uh, let's talk about the state of the nation, Nigeria. Many people all over the world have different tales to tell, uh, bearing in mind the things we're faced with as a nation and the truth behind so many things that many people seek, especially when you talk about the recently held hashtag NSAS protest in the country. Let's talk about your journey to activism in the country and where you think we are as a nation today. Well, very sadly, uh, we're nowhere. We're in the middle of nowhere. When I mean middle of nowhere, we're like uh, a country in a, sh you know, like a ship that has just been run aground because uh, the captain of the ship uh, doesn't have uh, an idea how to how to steer a ship, and the country has just uh, been grounded. It's been grounded for a while, but because we are peculiar people, we have peculiar characteristics. We have resilience, resiliences that uh, you can't even describe. We have uh, refused to accept that the country, Nigeria. I don't call it a nation has been grounded for a while now. That's the truth. Right. I'm, I, I'm sure also to you, um, since, since you were in the, in, the, in, um, in the journalism world also too, I'm sure, um, you see those stories coming and out every day and uh, deeply troubled uh, with the state of uh, insecurity in the country where I'm asking what you think about the fact that um, we've had Killings go on in Bonu State, the most recent happening um, a couple of days, and the governor of Bonu State, you saw the pictures there with uh, the number of farmers and fishermen who were you know, killed. Very unfortunate. But if you want to look at insecurity in the country, what would you say is the number one problem you think you can pick out? The number one problem is uh, when you talk about security, you talk about security agencies. And uh, security agencies are mostly uh, composed of the Army, the Navy, the Air Force, the police. Uh, in the case of Nigeria, we have additional, uh, <clears throat> what I would call, uh, supernumerary security agencies. We also have the, you know, some, some like the civil defense, you know, uh, federal road safety. So they need coordination, they need organization, they need leadership. And the person who leads security agencies of a nation is referred to as uh, the commander in chief of the armed forces for those ones who bear arms. And there are about five or six of them, uh, if not more, including the customs now, immigration, and plenty of them bear arms. It is that person, uh, the, the commander in chief of the armed forces, that is uh, missing in action. Am I, I don't think he has the capability. I don't think he has the presence of mind. I don't think he has the ability to coordinate, organize, and direct these forces to protect the citizens of Nigeria. That's the truth. And uh, when people wake up every morning, uh, issue press releases, or organize press conferences, uh, or hold meetings to say that they should fire service chiefs, I laugh at them because the problem is not service chiefs. The problem is the commander in chief of the armed forces who is not in control of his duties and probably not even in control of his own uh, cognitive abilities to govern the country. Okay. 
Um, you've never hidden your, your, your reservations about how the administration of this country has been under President Muhammad Buhari. In fact, uh, everybody remembers the, the fact that you go for revolution now. Uh, let, let's put on, into perspective the recently held uh, hashtag NSAS protest. You had wanted to do that on different occasions. You'd called for protests and we've had such instances being put under control by the government. Why, why, why did you think the earlier planned protests did not enjoy the level of support that the hashtag NSAS uh, enjoyed? Well, it's not, it's not true. I've been um, engaging in protests since uh, I entered the University of Lagos in uh, 1989. So, and participated, organized, coordinated, directed protests for 10 years between 1989 and 1999 when I left Nigeria. And those protests combined uh, led forced the military out of power. Sometimes protests uh, succeed, sometimes they don't succeed. Sometimes protests uh, serve as a warning shot. Sometimes they serve as a duty, as, as a way of energizing people, conscientizing them, educating them. So protests have a variety of uh, functions and duties. In our own case, we started a, a, a you know uh, a revolutionary protest in 2019. It is not true that it wasn't successful. If it wasn't successful, I wouldn't have been arrested before the protest. If it wasn't successful, the government would not have deployed uh, forces all over the country and uh, you know uh, arrested and detained people across the country. It was successful, and I was detained for five months because they were afraid of the protests. Even the NSAS protests we were talking about, no leader of the NSAS uh, protests is in detention as we speak. When I say leaders, I mean in promoters. There are still several persons that are in detention. So just to be clear about that. But I was targeted for that reason in 2019. And after I came out, we started organizing again. When I was in detention, organizing was going on. Even the DSS said, accused me of organizing while in detention, while in communicado. So the protests never stop. The organizing never stop. The communications never stop. The conscientization, the education, the movement of people to put an end to the shenanigans of the Buhari regime never stopped. So on August 5, 2020, we had a protest. The government was shocked. It was headlined everywhere. And uh, they sent uh, Pemi Adesina, who's the spokesperson to the governor, I mean, sorry, to the president, to say that it was a child play. And then that energized most, more people to say, look, it's not going to be a child play next time you hear from us. And then on October 1, of the protests across this country, uh, on October 1, we rejected the Nigerian independence instead. Because of that, they couldn't hold independence. On October 8, we were the first group of persons to lead NSAS protesters to the headquarters of the police, uh, the Nigerian police headquarters in Abuja. And then on October 9, there was another protest in Abuja where some young persons were arrested. I went to the police station to bail them out. On October 10, the major protest broke out in Abuja. Also on October 8 in Lagos, fast, run town led the protest. So these protests have connections. You forget about the hashtags. You know, I've always told people that the hashtag against us is just in nomenclature for disagreement with the government, loss of confidence in the government, whatever hashtag is called. The most important thing is that people are tired and sick of the Buhari regime, and they organized themselves and protested. And we have always been part of that. We've driven that. We've supported that. We've participated in that. We've led so many of it. A lot of protests that you saw happen during NSAS were led by members of uh, uh, Revolution Now across Nigeria. And uh, but I'm not saying that we were the only ones who participated, but a lot more people participated because we have kept this against this government going since 2019. One moment, Omoya, this Did you just say that the hashtag NSAS protest that we saw across the nation was you know, led by members of Revolution Now? I didn't say it was that it most of. The groups you saw, like in Ikeja, in I told you that in Abuja, which is not disputable, you can ask your reporters if they are in town, 
I was the first to lead the protest. Aisha uh, Yusufu to the police headquarters. We were the first to go to the police headquarters. We took their animal bloods and inscribed on the floor answers and stayed there until uh, the whole country was watching. So uh, Raph Adebayo was also, Raphael Adebayo was also the four of us. And this was well covered, you know, in Keja, revolution now participated uh, in uh, uh, Lekki. A lot of our people were there. In Abuja, every day that the protest uh, protest uh, took place, our members were there. So lots, of course, different groups joined across the country. I'm giving you verifiable information. But, um, still talking with Omoyele Shore. We're going to take a quick break. Uh, we come back, we have some more questions for him. Meanwhile, you can go on social media, follow us at Silver News 24. Any questions you put out there, we'll take them also too for him. Please stay with us. You can now stream Silverbird News 24 live on mobile app. All you need to do is to download Silverbird News 24 app from Google Play Store on your Android devices and App Store or on your Apple devices. Tap the live button at the bottom bar to watch us live 24-7. You can enjoy all our news programs including PJ News and Program. Silverbird News 24. The news never stops. Breaking news stories, insightful documentaries, news reports from around the globe, and original news content. Now available 24 hours daily on Star Times Channel 109. Stream live on YouTube at www.youtube.com forward slash Silverbird N24 Live. Follow on Facebook at Silverbird News 24, on Twitter at Silverbird N24, and on Instagram at Silverbird N24. Silverbird News 24, the news never stops. Uh, welcome back. And still with Omoyele Shore, rights activist, publisher, as well as a former presidential candidate. Uh, great to have him join us uh, virtually this morning. And big questions we're asking you this morning. Remember, you can follow us on Silverbird TV as well as Silverbird News 24 on Twitter. Any questions, comments, we'd love to hear them. So, there's, there's, uh, Omoyele Shore, there's a big debate going on line and offline also, too, I, I can imagine, on what to do with protest. Um, you've had... Um, um, you've had groups come out to say that, um, including the also organized labor over the electricity tariff hike and uh, uh, increase in the pump price of fuel, that Nigerians be patient, we'll have to do all the negotiations. If it fails, then we go ahead with the protest. People say you're a toothless bulldog. Um, the IG has come out and said that we would not allow those protests that, uh, uh, that happened uh, with the, after the, during the NSAS, which was hijacked by hoodlums at some point, led to anarchy and chaos all across uh, major cities in the country to Rio Core. And I'm sure you're thinking with your several years, you know, on the field and uh, protesting and all of that uh, for improved lives for Nigerians generally. What are your thoughts? Do you think warnings and all of those sort of things, um, people are beginning to rethink whether protests work or not? No, uh, look, you know, during our days as student leaders fighting against military rule, we had not only warnings, we would do protests the next day, the military would have expelled you using this uh, useless vice chancellors uh, who were our university administrators in those days. It didn't stop us. I was expelled twice from the University of Lagos. I was shot at. They killed people beside me on a Korodu road when Abacha was passing. Uh, but where are all these people today? We stood our ground, fought for democracy. Democracy became a reality in 1999. And then Moros took over the democratic process in Nigeria. That is why 20 years later, we are still having conversation about the right to protest. If you go to South Africa today, nobody can stop you from protesting because even though they just emerged, they emerged from apartheid in 1994, which, is, which wasn't too far from when we emerged from military rule, that you still have an inspector general of police who says to you, 
that uh, you can protest, even though their own constitution, which they imposed on Nigerians in 1999, that useless constitution, says that you even have a right to protest, shows that we haven't had democracy yet. And that is why this struggle that was going on now must be seen as a struggle for fight, you know, for freedom all over again. It's like fighting for independence all over again, so that you can have that bridging space to do what is right and just in your own society, so that you can restore your citizenship, that the police officer doesn't shoot at you because you have cornrows on your head, or that the army doesn't shoot at you, whether with blank bullets or live bullets, because you are demanding for your rights in an organized and peaceful manner. That is what democracy is about. When you don't have these tenets fulfilled within a democratic process, you don't have a democracy. You just have people who are running a country like a jungle. And that's why sometimes when you hear people say Nigeria is a zoo, I disagree with them. Zoos are better organized than Nigeria, as it is now. Because when you go to a zoo, they have doctors. They have a time to eat. Those animals get attended to. Some of them even get some kind of education. You don't get any of those things in Nigeria. Nigeria is totally a jungle. And all these officials that you're talking about, all these criminal elements that you're talking about, are just for the infuriating Nigerian people. And none of the things they are saying will stop people from you know, getting the liberty they need so that they can have a breathing space. It's not the first time we hear IGs, you know, hear military commanders, governors say all kinds of crap in Nigeria. But we were able to overcome all of them. Some of them, if you see them today, you think that trailers ran over them. They are nobodies. And that is why young people, or the Nigerian people in general, should disregard physical talks from all these jobbers and focus on how to deliver and rescue this country and make the country a better country because it's about their own future. It's not about the future of the IG. His future is secured. The daughter gets a job without applying for it at NISA. Why would, she, why would the IG care about you? doesn't care about so he cares about his job his family his own personal interests okay but you have to be the general interests of the people and that's why we're here all and right that's why we stop Mr. Amo, were maybe a very good place to come here and let's let you know also that everything that's being said by Mr. Amo Elisha really expressly his opinion and not those of Silverbird Television and Silverbird News 24. Now let's, most of the times we come to talk about government, criticize government and what is expected is, is a good thing to criticize the government. That's one of the dividends of democracy that we have when we operate this kind of system in any country. Now we're seeking solutions to what we, we, we've been talking about. For instance, you just heard about uh, the killing of 43 farmers in Borno on Saturday. And the, the, the government of the day has said that, you know, anti-terrorism was one of the tripods on which this administration uh, came into power. And you've said that the government is not doing anything about it. If you can, if you started with the responsibility of fixing it, how would you go about fixing the security of the country? What isn't this government doing to get uh, the country secure? Let me address first and foremost the caveat you are giving uh, about my opinion. I'm also in the media. I told the people who invited me on your show that I'm coming to give my opinion free of charge and I'm not going to hold anything back. I don't have to come on TV to say, you know, I can say whatever I want. And I know you guys come under the burden of the draconian rule of the government when it comes to the NBC. But I'm here to speak my mind because that is the only thing that will be recorded for history. The government does not exist. This government has not done anything to safeguard the lives and property of the Nigerian people. The government doesn't have competent people to handle security. When I was running in 2018 and 19, I said it clearly, I would have fired every army general that has been involved in the fight against terrorism. They are the most incompetent people you can have. They are not interested in ending the Boko Haram war. Boko Haram has, you know, the war against Boko Haram, the war against terrorism in Nigeria has moved from being a security matter to a business. At the moment it crossed that boundary to business, there is no ending it except you fire the operators. You remove them. You know, in some cases, try them openly for the crimes they are committing against the humanity of the Nigerian state. Some of them are committing treason, you know, absolute treason. 
there's some issues as a reporter that I know over these years that some of some issues are as bad as you know coordination between the Air Force and the Nigerian Army is the reason you are seeing all of this because there's rivalry between the chief of staff and the chief of the air staff over who becomes the chief of general staff is the reason why people are getting killed over just personal ego. These guys are not worth running a classroom. In decent societies, the people you call chief of this, chief of that in Nigeria cannot become class captains. So that's the truth, except to get to that point where we're telling ourselves the very naked fundamental truth about Nigeria, the operators of Nigeria, the people who are sabotaging Nigeria, and the reason why Nigeria is the way it is, why Ghana is better than Nigeria, whereas Nigeria should be run better than the entire African continent. Why the Republic is better than until we public officials, whether appointed or elected, are able to tell the truth about the social political condition of Nigeria. You know, even you guys in the media are wasting your time because I see most of the time you guys want to be window dressing Nigeria's situation. Oh, don't let uh, it's Shawere's opinion. Of course, it is not Shawere's opinion. It's the opinion of the entire nation that Nigeria is not working. Why are you deceiving everybody? Why do you like to sugarcoat what is wrong with your country? It's your country too. Media men, if the country is not safe, it's not safe for you, it's not safe for farmers, it's not safe for children, it's not be safe for lawyers, it's not going to be safe for doctors, nurses, it's not going to be safe for anybody if you keep telling the lie. Mr. Shawure, uh, for your submission, it is well respected, and that was why we brought you on the program, so that we can seek your opinion on the way forward for the country. And you've just mentioned that if you, if you had your way, you would get all the generals working, and so uh, that's the way you get it sorted no, with. What, what do you fired. think? These generals can never, but most importantly, okay. what, who I will get fired is the commander-in-chief of the armed forces, who is the most incompetent person. Uh, that Nigeria can produce in that position. People should stop asking him to resign. I don't think Buhari has the presence of mind to resign as the president of Nigeria. And the National Assembly, which is a rubber stamp body, cannot impeach him. Nigerians must rise up and ask him to go. That is the solution, you know, because he can't shape up anymore. What you would do because most of the times when we come and we talk about criticized governments, even, even businesses, companies, so to speak, is for us to have a way forward. Right now, what can we do to fix the nation? Aside the fact that you want the Nigerians to come out and remove the president, if that's not happening, what's the way forward? There's no, look, it's like a bad marriage, right? Where you are subject to constant abuse. You know, and you say you want out of the marriage, and the judge keeps telling you to go back. One day, the judge is going to have to sign off on your debt. So that's not the solution. The solution the, what I'm saying is that why are you deceiving? Why are we deceiving ourselves? That this somehow we can give suggestions to somebody who doesn't listen, or who doesn't even have the presence of mind to understand how to process and analyze, you know, and implement suggestions. That's the proof. If you ask truthfully, if you know ministers, if you know departments and leaders of agencies of government, if you know them privately, if you know they will tell you that there's nobody in charge of Nigeria. There's no nation that deserves, there's no country that deserves to have no one in charge, especially at crucial times like this, when other nations are grappling with COVID-19, they are grappling with security, terrorism, unemployment, you know, serious infrastructure uh, deficits, you know, terrible economic uh, conditions. The Naira just went from, you know, I don't even know what it will be by the end of today. It's not 503. You know, if you have $2,000 today, you are a millionaire in Nigeria. So if you saved the Naira for a year, it's not up to a dollar. You know, why are we still giving suggestions? Who are you so giving suggestions to? You are giving suggestions to the death. So, that's why I'm here. Uh, uh, I'm, not, I'm not talking to you from outside of Nigeria. I'm talking to you from Abuja, where I've been restricted for uh, more than a year ago by a judge because they manipulate the judicial process. Not everything is wrong. But I'm not, I'm not speaking to you out of in hiding. I'm talking to you in Nigeria just to tell you the truth. 
in, I'm not part of the people who will be lying to you that if you offer suggestions, you know, uh, in different formats that somebody's going to process. There's nobody to process your suggestions. And there's no situation. If that's the situation, why don't you just tell yourself the truth? All right, Mr. Shawore. Uh, so, something I want you to, to also um, impute, because there's never, I, 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 a lot of people don't think there's an end to us speaking truth to power. We'll keep on doing this uh, until we get um, some improvement in the situation. When, when you say, um, we look at um, the pressure on government, uh, interestingly, when you ran for presidency in 2019, your party did run on a broad, um, on a broad space. So you had people who were vying for um, office at national assembly, state assembly, at the different levels, which meant that you, as, a, as an individual, as the party's flag bearer, did understand it was important that if you even did get into Asurok, you have to have your people in place to promote your party's policies, which is how uh, democracy works by and large. So I'm a bit taken aback when you say, if we don't get things to work either through protest to get uh, policies to change for the betterment of the people, uh, we cannot work through the National Assembly, who are the elected representatives of the people, to make things work, even if it appears slow in your perspective. What do you have to say about that, Mr. Shawore? See, there's a difference between elective or elected national assembly or a selected national assembly. Unfortunately, Nigeria has a bunch of selected national, it participated in 2019 election. And I can tell you categorically, and this is my position and it's recorded um, at the DSS where I spent five months in 2019. There was no election. These guys just went around the country riding rough shoulders on voters, bribing voters, what they did, started doing what they call see and buy. That is not democracy. Those are not elections. So whatever becomes a product of that process cannot be regarded as elections simply because they went, you know, they got away with it. It's just like saying that because a robber successfully robbed a bank uh, and made out all the money in the bank, you make him the CEO of that bank. That is what you're telling me. Um, if, if your logic were to be acceptable. I'm saying there, was, there were no elections in 2019, and they know it. It was one of the reasons why they panicked when we started talking about revolution now, because they knew that they would be exposed fundamentally. So, and if you look at the National Assembly as media person, so do you see anything at the National Assembly that shows to you that somebody is representing you? I think even the UK Parliament is a better representation of Nigerians than the Nigerian National Assembly. The UK Parliament debated NSAS for two days last week. Up into the night, they woke up the next day, they kept discussing about NSAS and how soldiers and police kill people straight judicially. Have you seen a plenary session at the National Assembly of Nigeria that is including uh, the Senate and the House of Rep discussing NSAS, the most important issue in the country? Even as we speak, the Senate president has not issued a statement about the killings in Guano. The speaker issued a tepid statement. But the only act of National Assembly that you can remember in the last two weeks is the speaker's uh, uh, aid, security aid, shooting a newspaper vendor. You know, the National Assembly I remember in the last two weeks. So again, I will refer to them as elected representatives of the people. They're not representing anybody, they're representing themselves. In the social media space, you also run your business largely uh, online, so to speak. Do you think this space is a tiger to be tamed or a dove to be left in the air? You see, when you start organizing the social media space, then you are giving the impression that there's something wrong with the social media space. There's nothing wrong with the social media space. What is wrong with Nigeria is the governance space. And the social media is just reminding people on the, you know, in, in, in momentous ways of how governance has failed. And got people in government are then pointing to social media as a problem, which is a distraction. The problem is the government, not the social media space. The social media space is not only applicable to Nigeria, it's a global space for calling leaders to account, for ensuring transparency, for calling out people who are 
who ordinarily are beyond uh, being called out, you know, under traditional wise social media. So part of Nigeria is because other arms of governance in Nigeria have failed the people. So people have resorted to using the social media as their own little parliament. It is their own uh, judiciary. It is their executive space. But also forget that the social media space is also an employer of labor. A lot of people who are creatively uh, are creatively their space to make money for themselves to survive. Engagement and interaction for citizens. That is why government wants to shut it down. The reason why government is so uh, crazy about the social media space uh, or department, as I like to call it, is because it's, it's giving them such a hard time that they don't have... There's nothing wrong with the social media space. The conversation we are having today has been facilitated by a disruptive person who created Zoom, right? So I came from my room in Abuja to talk to you. If Zoom did not happen, I would have to walk to a TV station uh, or right. one of the Sure, as, as, we bring the, as we bring the discussion to an end, because time flies when you're having a, a big discussion. It's a question we also asked uh, Chris Wokobia Jr., who we interviewed earlier on. Interesting, was also a presidential candidate, uh, I think 2011. There's already a lot of uh, movement towards 2023 general elections, you know, to the consternation of many, thinking that the election just happened in 2019. But will you be contesting for the elections in 2023 if the opportunity showed up? I'm contesting for freedom, first and foremost. If this country is not free in 2020, And there can be a free 2022 uh, extrapolating what needs to happen is the presence of now we have an urgency of now how do people in my degree survive and vote in 2023 if they are slaughtering them and cutting off their throats even when they're engaging in legitimate business of farming how do the people of zamfara get to 2022 how do people in Lagos get to 2023 when you are shooting them when they engage in peaceful protests? How do people of Southern Kaduna get to 2023? People of Benue, Plateau State. How do our IPOP members or friends in the South East get to 2023? How do Shiites get to 2023 with this kind of government? So people who are calculating based on 2023 are doing what is natural about them, you know, uh, gambling about the political future of Nigeria. I'm not a gambler. I am a realist. I'm a Ma pragmatist. We Mr. want this Shore, country to be better because we, we, have, we have to leave now. Uh, Apologies, we, we have to go now. If you can hear me, Mr. Shawure. We have to go now, but we, within 30 seconds, if you can. I'd like for you to really clear this, and it's within 30 seconds, please. There's a rumor that you're being used by some enemies of Nigeria to destabilize the country, and that you've been heavily funded to do that. Can you clear the airs on that as we round off on the show I today? Mean, I need to clear the air. Um, the same allegation was made against me when I was arrested in uh, 2019 that I was given $100 million and that I've gone to Dubai to destabilize the country. When I was detained for five months, they took the evidence before the court. And when there was no evidence, they themselves withdrew uh, that charge that I was engaging in money laundering because they discovered that stupidly and ignorantly, I've never traveled to Dubai. So they would do the charges of money laundering, they would do the charges of cyber uh, stalking, and they left the laughable, uh, treasonable felony. So, you know, it's natural that when government is uh, lost relevance and, uh, uh, you know, any form of uh, intelligence, they start running around throwing uh, allegations around. And I expect that you, the guys in the media, will do a better job. I'm not, I've been, they've been accusing me of trying to stabilize Nigeria since I was 18 years old when I entered the University of Lagos. You know, there's nothing to destabilize Nigeria. Nigeria is already destabilized by its own leaders. All right. We you. are here to fix Nigeria. Thank right. you. Thank you very much, Omoyele Shore, uh, former presidential candidate as well as rights activist, publisher. It's been great speaking with you. We'll touch bases with you, uh, hopefully in the future. Thank you. Have a nice all right, and so there it goes. Um, massive interviews we have this morning. First with Chris and Wokobia, then with 
Oh, I'm really sure. And, and, and also for you for stopping by to be part of the New Super Review segment. Mostly to you for watching. Uh, keep there, just go on our social media platforms. Please keep tweeting, retweeting and posting. You can watch this program all over again when you go to our website. That's the show, News Hub Today. It returns tomorrow at 7 o'clock in the morning. I'm Shun Oyidiji. Have a beautiful day. And I'm our humble.